I'm Jonathan Ferguson, I'm Curator of Firearms here at Royal Armouries. Um, we thought it would be interesting to do a quick video on a few of the firearms that appear in the movie Dunkirk, but of course also were there for real. The most common, both in the movie and in real life, if you're a British soldier at any rate, uh, at that time was the, this version of Lee Enfield, the short magazine Lee Enfield. Short because it's short, not because the magazine is short, the magazine is actually quite long. Ten rounds, uh, twice as many as the German Mauser. Might be relevant for if you were the soldier at the time, certainly. Bolt action weapon, so uh, as a lot, of, a lot of rifles still were at that time. So lift, retract, empty case if it's in there comes out, close it up, lock it. And the other thing was the charger guide there. So you feed in your five rounds and another five rounds and they were trained to operate this um, very fast indeed. It made five, uh, what we call chargers or clips, five rounds at a time, uh, so two chargers to make it ready, the safety here, get it on safe, carry it about, and then clip off the safety and you can start shooting and operating it. Very simple, very robust, um, most, not much to choose between this and any other bolt action rifle at the time, uh, but this has 10 rounds, not five, quite fast. So, that's what most people on the British side were carrying around. Right at the end of the film, spoilers, um, you will glimpse uh, the enemy rifle, uh, the Mauser Car 98K, uh, the carbine, basically, which is a short rifle. It's very similar in length to the short magazine Lee Enfield. Um, the British were one of the first to shorten the infantry rifle to make it lighter and handier and to do away with the idea of short carbines for everyone else. Um, the Germans followed suit in World War II. So this, like the Enfield, was another Victorian slash uh, Edwardian vintage weapon tweaked to suit modern warfare as it was then. So same idea, bolt action, a couple of subtle differences um, that you can find out a lot more about elsewhere. Uh, only five rounds on the weapon, but of course you've only got five rounds in your clips, so once you fire ten out of the Lee Enfield, it pretty much becomes a five round rifle, unless you get a lull in combat and you can refill it to its capacity of ten. That, by the way, the floor plate there, pushes the rounds up for feeding, is also, on this gun, a way to tell that it's empty. So when you're panicking and you're firing at the enemy and suddenly the gun won't close, you know you need to put another five in, which presses that down, Let's you close it up. And again, spoilers, but in the movie, um, you don't get to see these used an awful lot because of the situation. So moving on, uh, I, th I think I'm right saying in the film we've got both Lewis and Bren light machine guns. Um, we, have, we have Lewis guns here, but I'm just trying to keep things short here. So I've gone with the Bren gun. Uh, partly as an excuse to show you all this, because this is the first ever Bren gun. First one ever made, apart from prototypes, of course. And it's actually marked on here, as well as Bren Gun Mark 1. The markings are quite cool, I think, because it's Enfield with a crown, a cipher, and the date of 1937, which is kind of how the old flint box and percussion things were marked as well. Bit of a throwback, because it's the first one. There's a plaque on the side, which we can show you in close up. And it's, it's complete to its original specification for the Mark 1 with the correct barrel and this folding handle at the back, uh, which was to, for grasping uh, and also to help you use it in the anti-aircraft role, which we see, see on, in film. On this early gun, there's a dovetail mount for an optical sight that wasn't actually issued during the, during the war. You've got the barrel lever here, barrel nut. Pull, if you pull that up, the barrel just slips straight off the front. With a machine gun, it's important to replace the barrel every couple of hundred rounds of fire to let it cool. So you swap the barrel over the two British weapons are in 303, uh, rimmed full power rifle cartridge, again from the Victorian era. Um, partly why this iconic Bren magazine is so curved, by the way, because of the, the taper and the rim on the back. You have to curve the rounds to make them feed reliably, hence the magazine is curved. Uh, the Mauser is in the equivalent German 7.92 by 57mm cartridge, very similar. Um, Again, not too much to choose between, but it doesn't have the rim, so it's less prone perhaps to jamming up. Um, there's an important scene right at the beginning of the movie uh, where 
quite clear why, but <laughs> the SMLE rifle jams up one on the screen at a time, and perhaps you could say that's down to the rims on the cartridge. These little technical details can become significant when it's you being shot at or you shooting. One more point on the brand, it is, it is a light machine gun. Uh, it can be mounted to a vehicle, it can be mounted to a ground mount for, for different purposes, or it can be used off the bipod as a man portable, true light machine gun. Um, magazine fed, 30 round uh, magazine. So the, the, the rate of fire is not something like an MG42 or something, um, but it is well respected, well liked, robust, accurate, low recoil machine gun. Check design. Uh, tweaks by the British, and uh, there you go. The, the, the legend was it was too accurate, too accurate to be a machine gun, but nonetheless, it was a good one. And finally, got here, we don't have aircraft here at the armories, sadly, uh, but we do have a number of machine guns. So when you see Tom Hardy flying around um, over the beach, doing his best with his friends, um, his, those Spitfires were originally armed with eight Browning 303 machine guns. Um, which is an absolute torrent of lead. When you, when you hear that go off in the movie and you see the effects, uh, it's as close as you'll ever get to the real thing. Um, we know some of the guys who worked on that film and they actually set up real 303 machine guns firing real tracer and that was composited in to the actual plate on, on the film. And it looks and sounds amazing. So belt-fed machine gun, no, no pistol grip, no trigger, you don't need any of that. It's in the gun, uh, sorry, in the wings of the, of the aircraft. Eight of them all firing at once, converged at a set distance, usually 300 yards, so that the pilot knows where his bullets will, will meet in the sky. And then he has to put those in front, usually, of the enemy aircraft so that they fly into his bullets. Very, around that time, uh, we were all discovering that little 303 bullets were maybe not damaging enough, so they're experimenting with, I think, one squadron with 20mm cannon. Great big, slow-firing, heavy, explosive bullets, and they would do much more damage to an aircraft than lots and lots of 303 bullets. And over time, they settled on a mixture. Two 20mm cannon and uh, four 303 machine guns instead of eight, or even 12 in some cases, with the Hurricane, um, of these 303 Browning machine guns. Um, so this, this has actually been sectioned, it's not, not massively relevant. Uh, it shows this partly because of the date on it, 1939, uh, was it the year that war broke out. So there are four, there are four guns of the era um, from our um, excellent collection that we have here, very fortunate to have.